Hello. This evening we're having a look at the Messerschmitt BF108 Typhoon in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this was a trainer that was built in the 1930s. Obviously it was used throughout the, the war by Messerschmitt and then in the years following the war got used as both a trainer still and as a sport aircraft. So any builds have released this for Flight Simulator. I actually bought it from uh, Oh crikey, what are they called Sim Market, uh, because I couldn't get the store to work at any builds. So thankfully, Sim Market was selling it, so I was able to get a copy of it. So I don't typically like flying warbirds very much in in Flight Simulator, but this is more of a civilian aircraft because it's a trainer. So you know, it, it seems to fit into the the wheelhouse, if you want to call it that, of Flight Simulator a bit better. Anyway, as you can see, the modelling of it is absolutely wonderful. The material modelling of the textures throughout are, are really, really good. You get many liveries with it. You obviously get some of the, the wartime trainer liveries and the um, observer aircraft. It was used for all sorts of missions during the war by many countries. And lots of countries have bought it as well. The British had them, the Americans had them, the, the Japanese had them. It was sold all over the world. Obviously this is a Swiss trainer, so we are at Ambry Airfield in the Swiss Alps to have a go with it. So if we go and jump inside, you can see there's the, the cover that is still on, is on the canopy. And you will notice in the loadout that I've got here, I'm not showing any of the, the cleverness to change the configuration of the aircraft. It's worth pointing out it can be changed significantly. So at the moment we've got the, um, the metric set of gauges in the aircraft showing the German labels. If we go and click on the little um, fastener on the glove box on the co-pilot side you can see you get a small uh, control box here so in here we can configure the aeroplane so we can oh that's gone wrong actually in settings we can say enable the chocks or not we can have a classic cockpit which it is at the moment. If we switch off Classic Cockpit, we get a comm radio and a transponder. So if you were flying it on Vatsim, for example, you'd obviously need the transponder. If you want to fly it in, a, uh, in its original configuration, you can switch those off. You can switch the gauge set to Imperial gauges. So you can see, obviously, much more recognisable, if you're a British at least, or American, much more recognisable gauges around the cockpit, which are great. And they're really nicely modelled as well, I have to say. So, you know, you go looking around and they're nicely done. Um, you can have curtains visible or not. I'll show you those in a moment because we'll come back to that. If we go and look in the maintenance section, you'll notice it's got this kind of wing folding mechanism for stowing the aeroplane. So to begin with, before we do that, we will go and remove the rain cover from the aeroplane so you get a proper look at it. It's worth pointing out, you'll probably noticed in lots of other simulator aircraft that quite often they have issues with the glass. Um, this aircraft doesn't seem to have any issues with the glass at all. It always looks really nice with no kind of artefacts, which is really cool. Okay, so yeah, we talked about there's some the option of some curtains. Um, if we go back into the settings, we can have the curtains visible or not. If we make them visible, you can see there they are above our heads. And if we go back over to the maintenance section, we can pull the curtains or draw them back up again. So if we go and pull them, then they'll reappear. And they cast shadows properly, which is really nice. You can see there is some component status, so you do get wear and tear on the aircraft, which is really good. Um, other than that, it's just a really nice basic trainer. The flight model is very good on it, I have to say, so that could be a surprise for you. So if we just have a quick look at the gauges, we get a clock, obviously, a binnacle compass, vertical speed, um, RPM for the engine, manifold pressure, indicated airspeed, um, magnetos over here that's a shut off button over there emergency shut off this is the fuel um, shut off valve the main fuel shut off valve you've got altitude you've got rpm for the propeller which you can modify by spinning the handle 
uh, fuel quantity, fuel pressure, oil temperature, and amperage voltage. You've got on the switches, um, yeah, landing navigation generator and peter heat. So how do we get this thing started? Oh, just to point things out, you've got an indicator there for whether the gear is up or down, and you've got a fuel selector for left or right tanks. Uh, throttle lever here. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Actually, no, we, we need it back for the moment. We need to go and fold the wings out. So let's go and do that. So, well, we just clicked. I think I've just clicked the undercarriage lever. Yeah, I did by accident. Okay, so we're going to unfold the wings. So you get a nice animation for that. So we wait and see that happen. Obviously, in the real world, some engineers would have run out and grabbed the wings and unfolded them and bolted them in for us. So that's all done. So we can now go and get rid of that out of the way and run this almost in its stock configuration as it would have been, but obviously with some English gauges to help ourselves out here. So we're going to go and turn the magneto to one plus two. So we use both magnetos on the engine. We'll push the primer in. We will crack the throttle forwards a little bit. We will lift the lever for the fuel shutoff valve and we will press the start button. And the engine is running and we can pull the primer back out. We can move the flaps to take off position and we're going to taxi straight across the grass and not apologize at all for it. We're going to take it for a fly and see how we do. So we'll press space to sit up. Actually, it's worth pointing out before we do go out to the runway. Let's just notice there are oh, there's no uh, wheel brakes as such in the aircraft, so you need to be careful about that. Yeah, so your take take your landing roll. You have to be very very careful. So there's, yeah, there's no parking brake either. Okay, so just before we do go and take off, let's just have a little look at, we can unhook the canopy and we can, as well as the windows working and they're influencing the sound correctly, we can actually open the canopy both sides so you can completely un uncover the canopy. So all of these nice animations are already in here and they work really nicely. I just wanted to point that out before we take off. Because obviously once you're in the air, you can't do that. Okay. There is no mixture control. That's something else that was a bit of a, a new thing for me. So something else as well, if we look outside, you'll notice it's quite a narrow track on the wheels. You need to be aware of that and be ready to dance on the, the rudder and the ailerons on the takeoff roll. Because it will get caught by the slightest crosswind. Okay, so I'm going to be ready on the ailerate, ailerons and the rudder to catch it. And we're in the air. Okay, so gear up. It will do about 130 knots. So I'm going to raise the flaps now as we gather airspeed. Ambry's beautiful, isn't it? I've set the weather for the summer just so we get some nice views instead of just boring old ice and snow everywhere. Okay, so we'll. You have to remember this aircraft because it does fly so slowly gives you lots of room to actually do really tight turns in valleys, which is really useful sometimes. So we can do this sort of thing all day long. It flies really nicely, but you do have to stay on top of it. It can get away from you quite easily. If 
we take it up to a little bit of altitude, you can see that it will drop a wing when we stall it. It will cause a stall in a moment. So we're just climbing out. It takes it a little while to accelerate, but when it gets going, it's quite fast. I didn't actually put the... Did I put all the lights on? I can't remember. No, I haven't. So let's go and put the lights on. There we go. They're not the brightest lights in the world, but they work. So we'll fly over the top of the airfield and pull the throttle back. And see if we can induce a stall in a fairly... We're just pulling up to hold the vertical speed here. And there we go. And we've dropped a wing. So I'm pushing forwards immediately to get the speed back. open the engine again so you can see it is quite dangerous there was no clacks on there's no stall warning on this aircraft so you need to keep an eye on the indicated airspeed particularly on approach I have done one test flight in it I came in too slow and I crashed because I dropped a wing over the I was over the runway when it happened but I dropped a wing and in the real world I would probably have survived it but there was very little warning that it was about to drop a wing, so you just need to be mindful of your indicated airspeed as you come in for an approach. So what we're going to do is fly down away from the airfield over here and then circle back in and come in for an approach. So to give ourselves some drag in doing so, we're going to go and drop the gear. So you can see that coming out again. It takes a while for the undercarriage to, to come down. So you'll notice it's such a narrow uh, gauge, I guess you'd call it, on the undercarriage. So you need to be mindful of that. So we're just flying out this way. Dropping the flaps has given an enormous, an, an enormous amount of lift on the nose. So. I'm just mindful of the airspeed all the time because I know it's so dangerous. Yeah, I think we're still going, we're a bit too high. And we would gain a lot of airspeed, so I'm going to circle. Obviously we're only going slowly, so we can circle in what would normally appear to be quite a, a difficult place to circle. But this thing will stay in the air. It, you remember it's very light. The engine isn't very heavy. Obviously the BF-109 was a different kettle of fish because it had a, an, an enormously powerful, incredibly heavy engine stuck on the front of it. But for, you know, for an airframe that wasn't actually much bigger than this. I'm just worrying we're getting a little bit slow. Look, we're coming down to 50 knots. But we're in a much better place now for this approach. So let's keep this indicated airspeed in place so we can see it. So we need to be mindful, yes, of the ailerons and the rudder. So we're going to have to dance on both over the runway to A, prevent the aircraft from rolling. So at the moment I'm holding a small amount of right stick the whole time. The aeroplane's wanting to, t to roll left. It's quite fascinating how it has these idiosyncrasies that you would have to learn. I'm just keeping a very careful eye on that indicated airspeed, knowing how dangerous this is. So 
So the uh, the documentation does mention, you know, any more than seven knots crosswind, don't even think about it, because you'll be fighting the ailerons on approach. Oh, I think I probably put the wheels through the wings. That was very heavy. I'm amazed I got away with it, to be honest. And I'm going to do a ground loop. No, I got away with it. So I'm holding back stick there to force the tail wheel into the ground. So it just shows you need to practice this aircraft. It doesn't come easily. And you saw I, I got to just under 50 knots and it started to sink on approach. So I got I was too slow. But it looks amazing, doesn't it? So I'll lift the flaps. Obviously we could open the windows as well, which is really nice. You get to hear the aeroplane. The sounds are wonderfully done, it has to be said. And it looks the part, doesn't it? I think comparing this against other aeroplanes that are similar to it in the simulator, I think I probably prefer the Piaggio, or Piaggio is it, or Focke Wolf, the P149. I think I probably prefer that to this. But this is kind of very, very similar, and it's just as good a quality. I think landing this is far more difficult. Anyway, let's have a look and see where we are in relation to a taxiway. I don't think there is any parking down here, is there? So maybe we'll just pull it onto the grass to have a look at it. Put it over here onto the right side of the runway. And then it rolls with a stop in the grass. It's a sound so to slow down, isn't it? Obviously you could you could induce a ground loop to stop it there. Yeah, that stops it pretty sharpish. And we've killed the engine as well. <laughs> So yeah, this is the Messerschmitt BF-108, the Typhoon. It's very, very good fun. And if you love this kind of um, era of aircraft, you can't really go wrong with it. It's very, very nicely done. Let's go and open the windows and have a look at it from outside for a final look. So there you go, the Typhoon, whoops, we're in the grass, <laughs> in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So hopefully you enjoyed that. As I said, I got it from Sim Market. I couldn't get it from any builds because their store wasn't playing ball. They have something wrong with their checkout, I think, with PayPal purchases. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon.